Greetings and blessings to you from Global Harvest Assembly. We pray that this message will ignite a passion for Jesus Christ in your heart and encourage you to live out your faith boldly. May you encounter God's love and grace in a powerful way today. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this blessed opportunity that He has given me today so that I can tell you how good our God is. Amen. I would like to thank Pastor Ruben and his beautiful wife for this opportunity and it's always a joy and a blessing to minister to his people. Amen. I come from a Hindu background. I was a complete idol worshipper a few years back. Uh, I was four years of age when my dad died and since the time my father died we used to live with, with our mother's family, her parents and our siblings. We were four of us, my mother, me and two of my siblings. So when four of us went to stay with my uncle and aunt, we would treat it as a burden for them. Of course, you know, they had to pay for our food, our clothes, our school. It was so much of uh, things they had to invest in our life. So they were not very happy for us to go and live with them. Life went on like that. We had no other option but to stay in that situation because we had no other place to go. We were abused mentally. We were abused with bad words said so many things which a child should never hear but because we had no option we had to live like that. I was the eldest of all so I had to hear and suffer more of the abuse than my siblings would do. Life went on like that. Because of the situation of my family and the atmosphere I was living in, I grew up as a bitter person in my heart. I was hateful towards many things in life. I did not like the world. I just thought that the whole world is so bad because the people with whom I was living, all of them were very, 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 you know, bad towards us. So I just put a thought in my mind and started believing that the whole world is such a sad and bad place to stay. Where would I find the comfort and peace that I'm searching for? So I tried to search it through my relatives, I did not find and suddenly one day I just thought that I will turn to the gods and the goddesses because in Hindu religion we have many gods and goddesses. So I thought that there must be one god or one goddess or somebody up there in the sky who will hear my cry. So I started doing whatever the religion asked me to do. In our Hindu religion initially they used to say that do this for this god, the god will be happy and the god will bless you. So whichever god and goddesses, whatever the priest told me to do, I did every single thing to find that peace, joy, comfort and that father in God. I cut my hair, sacrificed my hair and gave it to the god because in one place they said that when the god sees your hair, the god becomes happy and he will come to you. I climbed on the mountains and there was one stone on that mountain because somebody said that the stone is God and when you go and touch the stone, you will find the peace. I used to go to other temples where there used to be mouse and dogs and cats and crows and they used to tell me that go and speak to them, tell them your problem and they will come and solve it. I did everything that a person can do to find God but I had no peace, no joy and no God in my life. I grew up bitter, I became more adamant, I became more proud, I became more bitter. And then one day a point came in my life when I decided within myself that there is no God in this world. And we are just, you know, I do not know how we came, what is the origin of human being. But when these people are talking about God, I started getting irritated. Time passed on like that. I was born in a small city. I went to a city called Delhi in India. I started working as an air hostess. I started earning money. Nine years I worked as an air hostess in an airline. And then I got a very good job in a place called Dubai. So when I went to Dubai, it was a very lucrative job. I used to get paid in dollars. I had a lot of money, anything I could buy. So at that point in time, I started believing that now I've achieved everything in life. My uh, childhood was, you know, I, I went to poverty. I did I see a lot of, I saw a lot of lack when I was a child. So when I started earning the money, I started believing that I have got everything in this world now. I will buy a house, I will buy, you know, a car, I will buy expensive phones, I will buy expensive clothes, and I will show it to the world that how rich I am, and everybody who mistreated me, and I will go and show off and tell them, see, now I'm rich, what you can do to me. I was in that mindset, worshipping the money, giving all glory to money, and thinking that now I have got everything in my life. A day came in my life, the very first day when I had gone to Dubai, when I had gone to find an accommodation, I had reached a place where the believers used to stay together in a small studio apartment. 
I had a very good salary. I could afford a big apartment in Dubai in a very nice place. But something took me there and I decided to stay in that very small studio apartment in a bunk bed just to you know, look around Dubai for some time and I thought maybe after a month or so I will change my accommodation and go to a big apartment. When I first went to the studio, small studio apartment, one of my roommates handed a Bible to me. When she gave me that Bible, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, no, I don't need your God. I already have so many gods and goddesses. I'm so tired of searching them, not finding them. Kindly keep your Bible. I don't need it. Still, she insisted. So I told her, just because I don't want to hurt your sentiments, I'm keeping this Bible. But I know so many gods and goddesses, three million gods and goddesses could not give me that comfort. What will your God give to me? That I was so, so bitter in my life. Still, she said, no, keep it. She started sowing the seed in my life. She started taking me to the churches. In Dubai, you know, there are many people from all around the world who stay there. So the church services there are in all the languages of the world, mostly. So my roommate started taking me to every single service that she could take me. Bible studies, healing service, you know, deliverance service, Sunday service. I never understood what it was all about, but I used to come back from work tired. My roommate used to just literally drag me and take me to the church and make me sit in the place where I never understood what was happening in my life. I told her one day, why are you tormenting me like this, you know? Nothing is happening, nothing is going to happen in my life. Leave me alone. But still, she used to say, the very first day I saw you, God told me that something special is there in you and God is going to use you for, for His glory. I used to laugh at her face when I used to hear that. Time passed on. Nine months, I went to the church, nothing happened. I told my roommate, see, nothing happened. Your God also could not change me. I was so proud. I was so... Uh, you know, rejecting the, the, the precious word of God at that time. One day I was sitting in the office, I used to work for a Muslim organization where all my uh, colleagues were Muslim, you know, when they saw that I was going to the church and reading the Bible somehow, they also started sowing the Quran in my life, you know. So one day I was sitting in the office and my roommate used to give me assignments, you know, to read the Bible. So she used to say, okay, read this chapter and I'm, you, when you come back, I'm going to ask you some questions from this chapter. If you're not able to answer that, you will not get food to eat. So just to get the food, I used to read the Bible because of course I needed food after work. So that day also I was trying to do the same thing, was trying to read something that she had given me. So I was sitting in my office, it was a break time, everybody else went for lunch, I didn't feel hungry that day. I was sitting in the office and I was surrounded by all the things. The Bible was there, the Quran was there, the Gita was there, the CDs of all the other religion, Buddhist, whatever you call it, everything was lying on my desk. Because, because when people felt that I was searching for God again or maybe going to the church, they started preaching everything they could bring into my life. In that chaotic situation, I took, took the Bible and I just tried to turn the pages of the Bible to read it. Suddenly I felt that someone is there in the office where I was staying. I turned behind, I knew that there was no person because it was a break time. But when I turned, I could hear a voice which said that, let the dead bury their own dead, you follow me. I never had read the Bible before properly. I never knew that this was the Bible verse in the book. Later on, when I started reading the Bible, I came to know that this is the Bible verse that is in the Bible. I turned again. Same voice said the same thing. Let the dead bury their own dead. You follow me. At that chaotic moment, when I was surrounded by so many things, I could recognize that this was the voice of a true and living God. If Jesus was not alive, in that situation where I was so bitter and so sad, I would have never, ever, ever heard his voice. But yes, because Jesus was alive, I was able to hear that voice, even though I had closed my ears to everything anybody wanted to speak. I started crying that day. All my life, for 27 years, I had cried of pain, suffering, rejection, discouragement, depression. But that cry was a very different cry. That cry was a joyful cry. While I was, the tears were rolling out of my ears, my heart was so happy. I did not understand what was happening to me. I called my boss. I took a break. I went to my house. Three hours continuously, I was crying. I was on my knees and I was telling Jesus, Lord, I am sorry. All these days you were with me. You never left me. You never forsook me. It was me who rejected you. I had closed the door of my heart. I never wanted to hear your voice and I was complaining all these days that God does not hear me. God was right beside me that day God told me that I am your father. My roommates came back home, they saw me crying and the roommate who sowed the seed in my life, she started dancing that day. I asked her, why are you dancing? You know, I'm crying here. She said, I'm dancing because today 
God has touched you. Salvation has come to your house and now my job is done. Now everything that will happen in your life will be led by the precious Holy Spirit. She danced, she cooked a very nice meal for me, she gave me nice feast and she rejoiced and she said that as we are feasting here today, the heaven is also feasting because this soul who was so bitter, there was no hope in your life, she said. If I would have counseled you or if I have taken you to the pastor and you told the pastor to tell you about God, you you would have never believed because you were not searching for God. You were tired of searching for God. You were searching for a father and Jesus Christ only in the Bible. God says that I am your father. I have read the Quran. I have read the Gita. In no other so-called holy books, God comes and says that I am your father. It is only in the Bible. God says that I am your father and you are my daughter. Everybody says do this and the God will be happy. But here I have found the Lord, a father who said, it is done, everything has been done. Now you only have to walk in my path. As I said, I had a very lucrative job. A time came when the pastor said that now it is time for you to get married. There was an assistant pastor in my church. He was looking for a groom for me. I did not know what is going to happen in my life. I started praying to God. I used to come on my knees and say, God, father is the best person who could search the best groom for the daughter. I don't have a physical father, but I have you. I come to you, Father, if it is a will for me to get married to somebody, you bring that person in my life. If it is not, I'm going to do, ready to do whatever you will tell me to do. I used to pray like that. At that point in time, because I was very new, I did not know how we hear God. What is it? The signs, you know, people talk about that God gives us the sign. I never knew what it was all about. So I used to tell God, kindly Jesus, be very, very direct to me because I will not understand if you indirectly give me some sign. So I used to pray like that. So one day, Pastor Abhishek had visited Dubai. He was in the church. My pastor in my church was uh, giving a sermon. Suddenly in the middle of the sermon, he said that to all the young girls sitting in the church, I want to say that it is an honor to marry a man of God. He said, if there are 10 people standing in a queue to marry you, one with a great money, great business, good looking, great job, and there's one little pastor, he said. And there's one little pastor standing in that queue. He said, choose that pastor. That words, that word, from my uh, pastor came to me and I believed and I received that this word was spoken by Jesus Christ for me. Next day I met Pastor Abhishek at that time because these people were looking for the boys, you know, there were a uh, kind, lot of proposals for me. There were people with good job, great money, great business, good looking and there was one not so little pastor standing <laughs> on the, in the queue. So when he asked me for marriage, it was a very easy decision for me because God had told me to do so. So I decided to get married to him. When I decided to get married to him, many people even in the church and other my colleagues, they said that I'm making a, the most foolish decision of my life. They said that we know your story, how much you struggled in life. Now you've got everything, you know. You can buy anything, you can go anywhere, you don't have to give a second thought to invest anything. Now you're saying that you're going to leave everything and go marry a pastor and serve the God. Do you even know what serving God is all about? I said, I don't know what serving God is all about. But the one who has saved me knows what he's going to do through my life. I've committed my life to him and I'm not going to turn back because on the day when I was baptized and when I come out of the, came out of the water, these people were singing this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I said, you were the ones who sang that song for me. Now you're standing before me and saying that I'm making the foolish decision of my life. I don't think so. Maybe it is foolish for you, for not for me, because I have given it all to Jesus. The day I went with my resignation letter, my boss offered me a promotion with double the salary in a place called Sri Lanka, with a mansion, with chauffeur-driven car, everything that I had dreamt in my life and many young people in this world dream of. That day, I got the promotion when I went with the resignation in my hand. My boss said, now you're not going to resign because this thing you'll never ever get in your life. People work hard to get this thing in their life and you've come here with a resignation letter. I said, no, sir. People may work hard for that, I know, I understand. But all these years, 27 years, I was searching for something to so desperately. I tried to buy that thing with the money that you gave me as a salary. I did not find it. I used to go shopping, I used to go empty, I used to come back empty. I used to go and buy certain things, I used to go empty, come back empty. But I said, this time, at this point of my life, at this age, I found something that this money can never give me. Jesus Christ is my wealth.
that is what I said. I don't know about anything. I don't know what, you know, people are going to tell me. I just know one thing, that Christ is my wealth. And these dollars that you're offering me, they are just piece of papers for me. My boss was shocked. He said, no, think about it. I said, I've thought, I've given it to God. I left that money. I left every comfort that I had got with so much difficulty. It was not easy for me to earn that money, I know. But still, when I found Jesus, it became very, you know, of no price. I decided to get married to him. We, I came to a place called Nagpur. Nagpur is a very small city in the middle of the India. There was there's nothing much to see around the city. After I came to, uh, after I got married, maybe around four or five months, I came to know that pastor do not have salaries, you know, a monthly salary like other people have. We live by faith. On the day when I came to know that what living in faith is all about, I'm enjoying my life to the best. What I had in Dubai, the money I had, the comfort I have, I do not have it today. But I'm not poor. I'm always blessed. God has never kept me in lack. Whatever I need, God has provided. Why? Because the ultimate source, anyhow, is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. When the speaker said that you are making a foolish decision, I said because my God has said in the Bible that he knows the plans that he has for my life. Plan of a hope and a future. My future is in his hand. I gave it all. After I came to Christ, my life became life full of miracles. Yesterday I was sharing to pastor and his wife. That initially when, you know, in my childhood days when I was going through all these troubles, and my life used to be a burden for myself. I used to Google and I used to search, you know, where do we go after we die so that I could die. But now when I have given my life to Jesus, every single day is a miracle for me. It is a gift of God. I don't want to die today, but I want to live for his glory and serve him till my last breath till the time when God calls me home. I came and then we got married and then I conceived. Uh, within a month of my conception, when I went to the doctor, the doctor said that we cannot find the heartbeat of the child. So we need to wait for 15 more days or a month and then we will check again. After two months, I went again to the doctor. The doctor checked and the doctor said the heartbeat is not there. The fetus in your womb is dead and it has died you know, a month back. So the whole poison has you know, spread all over the womb. So they, you know, remove the, the dead fetus, they clean the womb. And then after a few days, when I went for the checkup, the doctor said that the womb has been weak now. It is completely poisoned and it will be so difficult for you to conceive again. And even though if you conceive by any chance, the child will not be a normal child. You will be a special child and a normal child. When I came back home, for maybe five, ten minutes, I was very sad. But then I remembered that the one took me out of the mighty pit, who put my feet on the solid rock, the one who saved me, the one who died for me when I was still a sinner, that same God is right with me in this situation also. I believed in Jesus, I didn't believe every any word the doctor said, because Pastor Abhishek is a fourth generation pastor. They have been serving the Lord, you know, for almost about 100 years in India. And I desperately needed a fifth generation pastor. I went on my knees, I put my hand on my womb and I started praying that there is a fifth generation pastor in this womb. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. The enemy doesn't have power. He's defeated 2000 years back. He cannot come and tell me that I cannot conceive Peter because I know that there's a fifth generation pastor in this womb. Within three months of doctors saying that I will never be able to conceive, God gave me Daniel. Amen. I conceived. The whole nine months when I used to go to the doctor, the doctor used to say that it's a complicated pregnancy. I used to come back home and the Holy Spirit used to say, it is a normal pregnancy. Everything is good in your womb. There is nothing to worry about. Nine months passed, Daniel came into the world. When the doctor saw Daniel for the first time, she was blessed because every child comes. She said that when the child is born, the child is ugly and crying, but he came out beautiful and smiling and I give all glory to Jesus Christ. He is a beautiful child. He is a miracle child. And because he is an answer, I always say that he is an answered prayer. So because he is an answered prayer, because when I conceived, I had uh, prayed to God like Hannah that God you've given me this child and I know it is a boy in India we do not know whether it's a boy or a girl until the child is born but I used to claim that I know it is a boy God had spoken to Pastor Abhishek and told given the name Daniel beforehand only and I used to pray that God I know you've given me this child to me and I give this child back to you today itself to serve you that prayer I prayed 
very innocently, not knowing what is going to happen in my life further. I used to, when Daniel came into this world, I told God, you are his mother, you are his father, you are his teacher, you are his guide. I'm just a caretaker. I cannot raise this child because this is your child. You are the one who is going to raise this child. God did it. In the age of three, he started reciting the Bible. He knows very many Psalms, long Psalms, uh, uh, many you know verses in the Isaiah, whatever, you know. Uh, many songs in Christ, whatever you teach him, in 5-10 minutes he will grab and he will start glorifying God. I've never seen such a child in my life and I'm so blessed to see that the child that God has given me is a miracle child and he is always happy to glorify Jesus. One sister asked Daniel, Daniel what is your hobby? He said, my hobby is praying. Amen. I felt so blessed to hear that my child that God has given, his hobby is praying. I would like to invite him. And uh, you might want to recite something for you people. What do you want to recite? Okay, be loud. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed this powerful arm? My servant grew up in a lost presence, like a dead and green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful and majestic in his appearance, nothing would take us to him. Despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, accounted with deepest grief, surely took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Yet he was pleased for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment brought us in peace was on him. By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. We all like sheep of God astray. We have all turned to our own ways, and he was laid on him, and in him he did of us all. He was, he was oppressed and afflicted, but he did not open his mouth. He is laid like a lamb to the shoulders, and the sheep to the shield is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet to his generation protested. He must be cut off from the land of living, for the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked. A rich in his dead day had no violence, nor had any deceit in his mouth. It was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. As the Lord make his life an offering of sin, he will see the offspring and prolong his days, and the Lord's will will prosper in his hands. After he had suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. With his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and all their iniquities. But he will not leave in haste to go and fight. For the Lord will go before you, the God of his Allah, we are dear God. Amen. God blessed us with him. You can see that. He knows many more Psalms. Of course, we don't have time now. I give glory to God for everything He has done in my life. Today, all three of us together as a family, God has given us grace to serve Him. We go to uh, many villages where many people cannot reach. Daniel comes along with us. He sits all the time. His father preaches. He looks to the people. He prays for them. He listens to them. And God has been using him from a very, very small age. I just want to tell you one thing and finish off. As we are trusting God, you know, the Bible says trust God in everything, in every single thing. When we say with our mouth that we trust God, it should not only by our mouth, but by our actions too. When we trust God in everything, God always and always directs our path. We should not look to the things that the world sees as blessing, you know, whenever people see a rich person, a person with a lot of money, they consider that person blessed. But to be blessed, it is deeper than that. The joy, the peace, the comfort, anything that the world cannot give, Christ our Savior has already given to us 2,000 years back. 365 times in the Bible, the Bible says, fear not. Every morning when you wake up, God is standing beside your bed and saying, fear not for today, for I, the Lord, is with you. Amen. 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 Stay blessed. Amen. Oh. I greet you all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ this wonderful morning. <coughs> and I believe that God has a great plan for us to go ahead in power. I always cherish and thank God for this wonderful friendship with beloved pastor, Pastor Ruben. 
I see him as a man of God and many times through his beautiful notes on the Facebook I get blessed his thoughts are very deep his approach is very honest the words are very practical and he don't know that many times I copy and send it to my friends <laughs> and I get the reply it's a wonderful thought and I said amen <laughs> So I thank God for his life. Meeting him is such a, such a joy, seeing him. Whenever I see him, I see him looking more younger, more glorious. So instead of going ahead, he's going behind in his days. Young, blessed, and I'm so grateful. Equally with the precious wife, so humble, so dear. Whenever I meet the woman of God, I learned so much. She's so hardworking, taking care, and uh, ministering and worshiping. Thank God for this wonderful partnership. There will be a time, it is my heart desire to see pastor and the wife in India so that they can travel with us in different places to different churches uh, in our organization so that their presence can be a blessing for us. Especially thank you for giving me this time to share the word of God. And I believe that this 2023 for your church is a season of transfiguration. Amen. When I was sitting in the presence of God in the, in the month of December, that is 2022, I started asking to God, God, please speak to me as we're going to enter this year. What are the good things that you're going to do in our lives? Every year God speaks to me. And he gives me a word that I anchor my life and I walk and I confess it day and night in my life. Amen. But this time I was not getting any word. You know, on 1st of January there are many people that call me. But I was a bit hesitant to pick their call and speak something upon their lives. And now here is the Sunday service and I said, God, it's the first Sunday service. People will be so excited to hear what this 2020 going to be about. But nothing was there. But right in the second week, God put his word in my heart from Matthew chapter 17. And it is written, while Jesus was praying, uh, he was transfigured. While Jesus was praying. Uh, it is not when he prayed, but while he was praying, uh, the mountain uh, saw the light of God. And this year, I want to tell you, as you are praying, uh, not after your prayer, while you are praying, God will do the miracles. Hallelujah. Before you finish this year, you shall say, the Lord has heard my prayer. Amen. You know, we are into a wonderful time. I said to Pastor, Pastor, I will preach less and pray more. So I believe that you are here to receive the word of God upon your life. Amen. And we're going to more declare upon your life that when you're going to go, you're going to go with the word of God, which is indispensable, unstoppable, irre irrevocable. Nothing is impossible with the word of God. And as you're going to carry it, I believe God going to do great wonders. Hallelujah. You know, today I'm feeling at home, just not because Pastor Ruben and the beloved wife is here. But some of my friends, you know, initially I came to Penang and Penang is a place where you come and you fall in love. And uh, there, is, there are two uh, things that you're going to find in Penang, Penang, people with a beautiful smile and people that offer a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't find Penang people in stress. KL people, they are too stressed, you know, they have one face and they move on. But Penang people, they are so happy, there is a smile on their face, that is why I am so glad that I am here. In our initial walk, one of the person that God used in our ministry was Sister Joanna. She is here and it has been a long walk since 2017. And today when I am seeing her in this service, along with Sister Shirley, I am so blessed that Sister Joanna was the one that used to connect me to different places. And she used to organize few events or meetings, you can say. And that's the way I was able to connect with a lot of pastors, which is also including Pastor Ruben. And I believe, Sister, your work 
that you have done it in this city, God will definitely reward you. And when I came to Penang, I was given one beautiful angel. And this angel used to drive me all around and her name is Auntie Stella. <laughs> Auntie Stella was uh, like, a, like a bodyguard for me. You know, so many years she took me around in her beautiful Mercedes. <laughs> And when I used to feel tired, and I was, I was tired when I was a bachelor, and uh, not much around me, and Auntie Stella used to take me around and take me to the beautiful beaches, and I sit in her car and I used to sleep, and I used to get up, and she's still driving. <laughs> and that was in her heart that I have come here so that, you know, a man of God can be blessed. Wherever I go, wherever I stand, I always testify about Auntie Stella that how much God has blessed this beautiful woman. Uh, many times we don't know, but she is a great blessing for us. She is a great blessing for the mission work in India also. I still remember when I was sitting in Penang and I had this heart to go ahead and start the ministry in Nepal, Bangladesh, and Bhutan. And here I connected this beautiful lady and uh, Auntie Stella through her team, you know, uh, did some sponsoring for me so that I can go to those nations. And today by the grace of God, God has opened and we have churches in those places uh, and many people are coming in the kingdom of God. Amen. I thank God for beautiful people right from this uh, beautiful church global harvest Amen. you know maybe you must be no, not knowing what you are doing but somewhere through the life of man of God through his investment in this church through his investment over this city God is doing great things Amen. and I just want to bless his holy name Amen. I was sitting here and I was thinking what to share but I want to continue something that God has put in my heart that this is the season where God wants the iron to float on the water. Hallelujah. You must be thinking, what is drowned? What is lost? I shall never recover it. But today, this Sunday, God is saying, whatever you have lost, believe it. God will bring it to restoration. Hallelujah. Maybe you have lost a job. Believe that God will bring that provision in your life. You have lost your health. Believe that God will make you to run like and to fly like an eagle. Hallelujah. And you shall say, I am running, but I am not weary. I am walking, but I am not faint. Hallelujah. Because God has brought that restoration in my life. You may be going through a time where you are being challenged in your own uh, family life life or marriage life and things are falling apart but I want to tell you God will make the joy to come back peace to come back uh, his grace to come back uh, his blessings to come back I believe the time is coming even the arms that have moved out uh, shall float in this church uh, in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah come on lift up your hands and I prophesy over this congregation that whatever you have lost uh, whatever has fallen down it shall flow to the surface in the mighty name of Jesus uh, your finances are being touched uh, your play and your health are being touched uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and somebody say Amen. now here the Bible says in 2nd Kings chapter 6 uh, here is a beautiful story and the prophets are walking together and they are saying the place that we are in is too small for us. Let us go for an expansion. I just want to tell you whenever the prophets are there, they will always feel that something is less. Hallelujah. And the church of God, don't limit yourself. Hallelujah. Let the word go whatever they are going. But the Bible says, I know my I plan for you, plan not to harm you, but a plan of a hope and a future. Hallelujah. You can believe there shall be a former and the later rain together. You can believe Psalm chapter 18 it says, uh, the Lord has brought me to a spacious place. Uh, today I want to tell you, your job, your job is too small. Your business is too small. This church is too small. Your ministry is too small. It's time for you to say, let us expand it. Hallelujah. 
You know, when we stand at this place and we say, God, yes, uh, I am a prophet in my house. Uh, I am a prophet over my family. I am a prophet over my church. Uh, I am a prophet over my city. And children of God stand up uh, and start declaring the word of God. Hallelujah. When God took Ezekiel over the valley of pride bone, uh, God said, son of man, what you can see? And he says, I see dead pride bones. Hallelujah. And here God said, says uh, what you think it can happen he says God you know it and I gonna open my mouth hallelujah don't look to the situation just open your mouth because God has placed a great word in your life and somebody say Amen. now here the companies of the prophets said to Elijah look the place where we met with you is too small for us let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there so that we can meet. And the prophet said, let, let us go. And one of them said, why won't you please come with us so that you can see your servant working. And Elijah said, I will. And they went. Uh, as they were to the Jordan, he began to cut down the trees. And one of them was cutting down a tree. The iron axe head fell into the water and he cried and he said, Oh no, my Lord, he cried out, it was a borrowed one. Now I want to tell you, in our lives when we dream about an enlargement, uh, there are things that we should always remember. There are some mistakes that we do and then we land in problem. But today I'm not talking something that you should do, but something that you should never do. The first thing, the man went with an axe uh, and he started cutting the tree and there was a laziness in his life. Uh, he was reckless while cutting the wood, uh, while cutting the tree. And I want to tell you when you believe to grow into the next level, let there be no laziness in your life. Uh, let there be no recklessness in your life. Uh, but whatever you do for the glory of God, uh, do it with all your heart. Hallelujah. Do it with all your might. Hallelujah. Do it with all your strength. Hallelujah. When you pray, don't pray just in your lips, uh, but pray it out loud. Uh, come on. Whoa, I'm here for a belief, Lord, that I will speak forth your word. Hallelujah. I will not come lazy before you, and I will sit in your presence, uh, and I will yawn ten times. Uh, no, Lord, I will wash myself. Uh, I will prepare myself, uh, and I will go toward that expansion. Hallelujah. There are many Christians today, they are coming to the house of God with a reckless spirit. Uh, they are coming to the house of God with a lazy attitude. Uh, they are going before God and saying, God, do this. Uh, but there is no joy and there is no fire and there is no, uh, the, the, there is no courage in their life. Uh, but today I want to tell you, Lord, be like this man who is going and he is not like, ready to aim the axe on the right position. Uh, and now there is a fall. But when we come to the Lord, uh, let us believe God. Uh, I'm going to give my hundred percent uh, whatever you have called me to do hallelujah when you are coming to pray here when you are coming to pray together when you are doing anything in your church uh, consider it uh, that yes God uh, this is the place uh, where my expansion gonna come hallelujah this is the place where you gonna bring my exaltation hallelujah you know many people they are not excited when they are gonna go for the things of God Oh, it is just a Sunday service. Oh, it is just a time that I have to lead the praise and worship. Oh, it is just a small group that I will go and I have to do something with them. But I want to tell you, take every opportunity as the last one that God, I'm going to invest my time. I'm going to invest my uh, uh, strength. Uh, I'm going to invest all that you have given so that there shall be no mistake uh, out of my life. You know, there was a man in the Bible and God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. And God says, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. And God says, sacrifice your only son. 
And here the Bible says next day, very early in the morning, Abraham got up and he sandaled his donkey and is ready to go on that sacrifice. There is no laziness, there is no recklessness, there is no inquirement. God, I want to check with you one more time whether you have spoken or somebody else have come in my dream and I have heard somebody else's voice. But he said, no, the Lord has called me and when God is asking me to do something in the house of God, I'm going to do it with all my heart. I'm going to do it with all my strength. I will not be lazy. I will be not reckless, but I will join this mission and I will join the vision of the church and I'm gonna go it on the mountain and I will sacrifice my only son because I know that God out of this shall bring a divine increase in my life Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when I started my journey, I was a young man at the age of 17, 16, God touched me. And now on 17, I'm on the floors of India, going here and there on the streets. Uh, and I said, God, it does not matter. Somebody invites me or not, but I'm going to stand. Uh, my dad was a pastor and there were many churches uh, that he could have opened for me. But I said, God, I'm going to rely on you. I'm going to depend on you. I'm going to trust in you. And God, I'm going to go if nobody invites me. I'm going to go on the streets and I will preach about Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, when I preached for three months on the street, nobody gave their life to Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but whenever I used to turn back to my house, uh, I used to go back on my knees and I said, this time you're going to give me one soul. But next day when I went on the street, nobody gave their life to Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, one month went, uh, second month went, uh, third month. On the last day, there was one old lady that heard the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ and he gave her life to Lord Jesus Christ that day. Hallelujah. And I rejoiced. Uh, it never happened on the first month. It never happened on the second month. Uh, but every night I used to say, God, this is the day that the Lord has made uh, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, and when I used to come back after preaching the word of God with no result, uh, there was no sadness on my face. Uh, there was nothing because even many people in the Bible, they were not able to influence many one uh, in the last days. Uh, take it about uh, in Hoka, uh, he was not able to draw many people in his life. Uh, take it about example of Noah, he was just able to get the eight people in, in the ship. Uh, and I want to tell you, when you are going out to save the lost, uh, if nothing is happening in your life, don't get discouraged. Uh, keep going. There will be a time where God will bring that expansion. Hallelujah. Amen. Things started changing in my life. I never thought that God will place me over 55 nations. And I believe there are many more nations that God can open for me for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I never thought there will be more than 500 pastors that are going to come uh, with me and they're going to say, yes, sir. Yes, pastor, I want to work with you towards the vision of God. Hallelujah. When God said, uh, I will place you like a leader. And I said, God, okay, I'm ready to be a leader. If you have said, I will be a leader. Hallelujah. And by faith, I went and registered an organization in 2008. Uh, there was no recklessness in my life. Uh, but before I went to register, I fasted for 40 days. Hallelujah. And I said, God, if you're going to give me an organization, let your name be glorified. Uh, let your purpose be released. Uh, that you're going to go ahead of this organization and place your blessing on it. Hallelujah. Now I'm having a certificate that is registered to the government of India. And now I say, God, now you're going to bring forth the people. You know, nothing happened in my life. First year, nobody joined. Second year, nobody joined. Third year, nobody joined. Uh, it took eight years, nobody came. The first person uh, that uh, joined my organization officially was my wife. Uh, she came in. Hallelujah. That's a good one. That's a good start. Hallelujah. When I went, Come on, let us work together for the kingdom of God. The pastors in India, they used to say, how much salary are you going to give it to me? <laughs> I thank God. The, my wife never asked me how much salary you earned. <laughs> but I, I, I really wanted her to ask that question because I was so curious to tell her that I don't earn anything. I just wait uh, after my prayer when that sweet message goes tick tick. I know that's a bank one, hallelujah. <laughs> but I 
want to tell you there was not one day that I moved into the presence of God or in the work of God without having that reckless spirit in my life. I said, it's a joy to serve God, hallelujah. It's a joy to worship his holy name, hallelujah. It's a joy to move out and say, God, you're going to do something, hallelujah. If God is taking some time to do something, rejoice and be glad and show more attitude, show more passion, show more fire, show more substance out of your life that God, I am more desperate than you, hallelujah. I want that blessing in my life so that I can be a blessing for your kingdom. We started praying and God started bringing people in our ministry. Now people are not joining my organization because I will pay them the salary. They are saying, Pastor, we want to be in this organization because we want to do the work of God. Hallelujah. There is not a single pastor that is on the salary slip. Whatever God blesses me, I give it to them. But now they are coming from east of India. They are coming from the west of India. They are coming from the south of India. They are coming from the north of India. And they are saying, Pastor, we are ready to go into that mission because we know that we can see an expansion that God is bringing hallelujah what a God that we serve hallelujah I never thought down the line 10 years uh, that we will be having churches in Bhutan in Nepal in Bangladesh and different other nations I want to tell you when you're going to do the little things with all your strength uh, God will bring that expansion in your life hallelujah when you see no results it does not matter the result gonna come and when it's gonna come it's gonna overtake your dreams hallelujah it's gonna overtake uh, the things in your life and you shall say the Lord has blessed me Amen. the first mistake this man did uh, he was reckless in his cutting he said oh I'm getting tired uh, I am not there hundred uh, percent and why he was just negligent uh, and lazy attitude uh, and he was reckless at the time the axe went inside the water and he said oh Lord please help me you know many times laziness in our life bring us to a place where we land in problems just imagine if we would have not been reckless in the time with God. We would have not been lazy by spending that great time with God. I believe that we would have never said, Oh Lord, my God, please help me. But we would have said, Oh Lord, my God, thank you for great things that you have done in my life. And when he cried out and he said, Oh Lord, my God, please help me. It was a borrowed one. The second thing that I want to tell you why you go for an expansion, never go for a borrowed thing. There are many people today, they are operating on borrowed anointing. God wants to give you the original anointing. He wants to give you the precious Holy Spirit, hallelujah. There are many people today that go from places to places. They're going to go from one meeting to another meeting to the third meeting to the fourth meeting. They will go from one prophet to the another prophet. They're going to go to one place from another place and from one church to another church. I want that anointing. Where is the anointing? Where is the anointing? Which place? Okay, Penang Hill. Okay, I will go to the place. Okay, uh, to the which I will go to. Okay, KL, I will go to the KL. Oh, okay, Singapore, I will go to Singapore. I want to tell you, stop doing it and spend time in the presence of God and let God come and anoint you in the special way because when that God will anoint you that little stone can bring the giant on the floor hallelujah. come on give glory to God hallelujah. there has to be a desire that God I will not go for the borrowed one I don't listen to the songs uh, many many less uh, there are seasons in my life that I sit in front of the YouTube and hear the messages but every day I make an effort uh, that God I'm gonna go in your presence uh, and I will sit in your presence uh, and I will seek you with all my heart uh, and I will say God here I am uh, you touch me you build me you speak to me you come have a fellowship in my life It's time for the church to say, God, not the borrowed one, not the easy one. I'm going to pay the price for it. Your axe will be sharpened. Your family will look different. 
Your walk will be different in the city. Why? Because it is not the borrowed one, but it is the one that has anointed the church on the day of Pentecost. Amen. That dynamic power that Jesus has given to the church is now in you to go and do great and exploit in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Make an habit uh, to go and sit in the presence of God and speak in tongues. Hallelujah. This tongue is not just given oh baba, oh baba, oh baba, just on the Sunday service. This, uh, this tongue is not given to you so that you just come in some prayer meeting and just stir it for 5-10 minutes. Uh, but this tongue is given for you so that you can bring the edification in your life. Uh, close the doors, hallelujah, and look to the situation. Yes, my family is under attack. Yes, my finances is under attack. Yes, my spiritual life is under attack. But Satan, I'm coming back uh, and go and close your door and say, God anoint me. God anoint me. God anoint Anoint me. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Jesus you were anointed by the Father. Now you anoint me and sit and speak in tongues. And keep doing it because that's not the borrowed one. That's the one that is coming from heaven in your life. Hallelujah. And when you're going to walk to your job and when you're going to walk to your family and when you're going to walk to any places you're going to see the moon of God is happening through your life. The doors that are closed are getting open. The mountains that are standing up being removed. Uh, the places that you want, the revival is coming because now it is the work of the Holy Spirit in and through your life. And somebody Amen. say, Amen. Come on, somebody say, Amen. Come on, somebody say, Amen. You are the child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the child of God. Hallelujah. Yes. You are the child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I travel to so many places and people come to me and say, Pastor, I have this problem. I say, okay, Rabastrebante, Lord, help them. And I come after two years and then people, same people, they come, Pastor, we have the same problem. I said, okay. And then I come after five years and I meet those people and the people say, Pastor, we have the same problem. I want to tell you if the problem is the same, you don't need the borrowed anointing. You need the anointing that comes through the power and the presence of the real God. Hallelujah. Pay the price and God will anoint you. Yes. Pay the price and the Lord will anoint you. Come on, somebody say, turn person uh, next to you and say, pay the price and the Lord will anoint you. We are not blessed with different Holy Spirit. We are blessed with one Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There should be not different anointing. There should be one anointing in our life. Hallelujah. So that we can say like Peter and John, gold and silver we have none, but rise up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I still remember when I used to pray. I don't know, you know, I used to love to speak in tongues. And there was a meeting that was going in our church. And there was a big ground. And I saw all the members, they are just un encircling uh, over one demon, over one lady that was manifesting. And I saw our assistant pastor, and I saw our prayer warriors, and all of them, they were encircling this demon, and they are trying to bring the demon out and say, out in the name of Jesus. And the demon said, I will not come out. <laughs> and one member, and again, another member came and said, I command you. The demon said, don't shout, I will give one snap on your face. <laughs> And I was very young, but I was I was being given a charge to take care of the chairs. So after the meeting, my job was to collect the chairs, and I was praying it. Astra hanta gado goes through bite. And one day, one auntie, you know, the, when, when this go, going on, and one auntie called me and said, Abhishek, can you also come in? And I said, Lord, what is going on? I am seeing that for three hours they are not able to do it and now they are also calling me so that I also get something from this demon. <laughs> but 
I said, God, I'm going to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I went there. I stood very young age, 19. I stood and all the pastors, they were behind me. And this lady was standing in front of me. And I said, you look in my eyes and I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, you come out. She just like a bullet, she fall on the ground and the demon were coming and the demon came out and this woman was set free and the pastors and the leaders, they were, they were rejoicing uh, because many times we go into the borrowed anointing but the Holy Ghost that is working in you while you are paying the price, you are enough to go in any place, in any situation and in any place and you shall see the power of God will be manifest through your life. Amen. Amen. After the meeting, I did like this. <laughs> I still remember when I came for the first time and I was in one church, I forgot the name of the pastor, he's quite senior. Pastor Andrew. And then there was an evening meeting and the people were there and, and I was preaching hardly 22 or 23 at that time and I went to the meeting, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying and God said, you know, before, the, you know, many people, many pastors, they pray like this, God bring the souls, I pray differently, God bring the demons, God bring those people who are in bondage, God bring those people who are struggling in their lives, God bring them so that today they can see the light of Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And now when I was preaching, suddenly two girls, they stood up and they were young, nice Chinese girls with, uh, uh, you know, 4.5 or uh, 5 feet. <laughs> Chinese are too small, you know. So they were coming at them. And I thought they are coming for the testimonies. And both of the girls stood before the meeting like this. <laughs> And I said to myself, God, I have dealt with the Indian, but I have never dealt with the Kung Fu and Karate. And both of the girls passed this through like this, and they were ready. And I said, this is the way that you are worshipping. I never thought that there was a demon inside, you know. Because in Penang, I've seen people, they're dancing and worshipping God. And I thought this is one of the moves that they will be doing that. Shata Bora has Now I went inside the battle and the girl was this side and that side and we all, I was also rotating and they were also rotating. I was just thinking which one to go first. <laughs> you know, I never knew I started also doing But finally after a few seconds so Sometime from ministry, I say, in the name of Jesus. And both of them, one flew that side, another flew that side. And they were resting like this, all day, all gone. And somebody has released the blood fire in the name of Jesus. But I want to tell you, just have that original anointing for yourself. Hallelujah. God said to Jeremiah, I have set you apart. God has set you apart for a purpose. God has set you apart for a plan. There is an anointing in your mother's womb. There is an anointing in your life. You are not called the devil plays with you. You are called that you play with the devil's work. Hallelujah. You are not called to be under, but you are called to be over. Hallelujah. Only thing that you have to do, my brothers and sisters, that you will not say, God, I will not run here and there, but it's the time that I'm going to sit in the presence of God. I will open the Bible. Hallelujah. I will meditate on your word. Hallelujah. What I do with my son, I say, son, no comics, sir. no Christian books, sir. nothing cartoon. If you want anything to do, read the Bible, meditate the Bible, read the Bible, meditate the Bible. There are people that come and give him the book. I say, come on, give it to me. Let me give to somebody that is going after the borrowed anointing, but you go after the original thing. Hallelujah. They say it's the word of God that gives us the anointing. They say the word of God that has said it shall be done. This is the word of God that nothing is impossible for you. And I want to tell you, take it in your life, take it in your heart, take it in your purpose and get that anointing so that when you go forward, no power in hell can stop it. God is putting in my heart in these days, in these days in Penang, God is not looking for the ones that are going to go for the borrowed anointing. But God is looking for the one that they're going to come to him. Hallelujah. 
as Moses came to God, as Abraham came to God, as Peter came to God, as Paul was on the way to Damascus, uh, but he said, God, here I am, uh, touch my life. Uh, God is looking for that generation in Penang that going to say, anoint me, O Lord, with fresh new anointing. Hallelujah. If you want that anointing, lift up your hands and I will pray for you. Hallelujah. Oh, you are not going with the border one. It is the Holy Ghost that is going to touch you. It is the power of God that is going to use you. You're going to go back to your places uh, and the giant will be on the floor and the demon shall flee from the house uh, and the promotion that has been stuck is going to come in your life. Uh, the financial turnaround shall be there because God is anointing you in a new way. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for the fire. I feel the presence of God. You are being healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The pain you know, on your body, the suffering on your flesh. Today in the name of Jesus, receive the healing grace. Hallelujah. I feel in my spirit, oh, many of you are going through a time of depression, but in the name of Jesus, I put it out. And I pray that the joy of the Lord set you free. Joy of the Lord set you free. Somebody receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 Mr. There is something special. Receiving anointing from God. Amen. You know, when you, you have seen this story in the Bible, Goliath and David. Because the servants, they were looking to Saul. They were looking to the kingdom of Israel. Looking here and there, who's going to go? But there was a young man, only one that went forward to stand before Goliath because he knew God has anointed me. Amen. God has anointed me. I shall not fear about his height. I shall not fear about what he's saying. I want the price. The Bible says, I love this, the Bible says, the man cried out and he said, Master, it was a borrowed one. He went to the master and he said it was a borrowed one. And the master said, take me to the place where the mistake has taken place. One thing I want to tell you, God wants to come in the same place where the ex have fallen. He wants to come to the same place where enemy has attacked. He want to come to the same place, that same year where your business and you have gone through a troubled time in your life. And the prophet is saying, bring me to the place where the error has taken place. I want to tell you, God is not the one that's going to start from where you have come. God going to take you back to the place of dishonor. God will bring you back to the place of defeat. God will bring you back to the place of tears. God will bring you back to the place of pain. God will bring you back to the place of misfortune. Whatever you have lost in 17. Whatever you have lost in 18. Whatever you have lost as a teenager. Whatever you have lost as a mother. Whatever you have lost as a father. Whatever you have lost as a pastor in your life. God is taking you back to that place and saying uh, this is the place where the iron will float on the water it has never happened but I the Lord will bring the restoration hallelujah I the Lord shall bring the restoration hallelujah you know the prophet took a stick I love that he took a stick and he put it on the water and the Bible says X came floating what is that stick that is the cross of Lord 
Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That cross shall be used at the place of defeat. Uh, this cross of Jesus shall be used at the place of our sicknesses. Uh, this cross shall be used at the place where the things have fallen, uh, where the family has gone down. Uh, but I want to tell you, when you're going to hook up on the cross of Lord Jesus Christ, uh, everything that is down shall rise in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Though it is impossible, it is a history. Ten years have gone, but still the cross has a power to pull all the things from the depths of the ocean and bring it on the surface so that you can say, what I have lost, I have found. What I have lost, I have found. Hallelujah. The cross of Lord Jesus Christ. Today I want to encourage you this morning. Let the cross of Lord Jesus Christ go to that place where the mistake has taken place. Maybe you made a mistake, yes, mistake while you got married to that person. A mistake that you have forsaken the presence of God. A mistake that you have not prayed in your life and the demon has attacked your life today. I want to tell you, come to the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. The cross will show its power. The cross will bring freedom. The cross will bring liberty. It is not the cross of a man. It is the cross of God himself that was there for you shedding his blood. And no one that has come to that cross has never seen, never seen unchanged. He has gone. God has brought a tremendous change in that person's life. Hallelujah. God is mighty. Hallelujah. God is mighty, hallelujah. Amen. He's our miracle working God. Only thing the cross of Lord Jesus Christ can bring that iron to float on the water. Amen. When I was sitting in my room and I said, God, what is the word? God said to me, the cross shall pull the things in the people's life. And today I want to tell you, no matter what is the situation in your life, Come to the place of mistake and say, God, I need your healing. I need your touch. Amen. I need it to see greater change in my life. Why not we all stand on our feet right now?